so she got 270 psi before. We want to be at about 250, and okay. yeah, that's gonna that's gonna put us in the sweet spot, I reckon. She gets all pressure. You ready? Yep. Yeah, you're saying that's really high too. So it's um, good, yeah. because there's no oil squirters in there. No oil squirters. The twenty valve, the twenty valve four A's with the oil squirters. They only get about forty two on the key. Yep. And uh, the cross drill crankshafts. These are seven eight crankshafts. They're not cross drilled, so they're not going to get the pressure the same as what this does. Yeah. Not to mention we've done a four A oil pump conversion port of the block to suit it, and so we've got more flow, higher flow pump. Yeah. And would yeah. you say there's anything like is there such a thing as too much oil pressure? Like you, yes. Yeah. So yes. how 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 close are we to going too far? Uh, depending on what that oil pressure relief valve can relieve. Yeah. Like if the oil if the oil pressure relief valve works as it should, and it can get rid of the excess oil pressure, yep. you, we shouldn't see more than 80 pounds of fuel uh, of oil pressure because we'll just drain the sump dry. Yep. Even though we have a big big sump. Yep. If we drain if we drain the sump dry, well then it's just gonna hurt bearings. But you're super happy at 62, that's perfect. Yeah, yep. and um, this being a small port head with the rear head drain into the sump, that's really gonna help us um, because we're not gonna, uh, again, we're not gonna pull oil in the cylinder head. It's you're gonna, gonna have somewhere to go. Yeah, yep. you find that with big ports because they don't have that rear head yep. drain, so. Um, obviously, it's not set up yet, but that will yeah, come yeah, down it's going to come down to the, the bottom. Down there. Yeah. Perfect. Easy. Okay. So, I'll take some cylinder timing out of some pressure out of it now. So, how come you put the balancer on there? Does it really matter if you had one on there or not? Yeah, it, the balancer holds your, the timing gear on. So, I ran it without it, and the timing gear started to move forward oh, and the see. belt started to come oh, off. Oh, I see, okay. So, yeah. I just put it on there. If I have washers or a big washer, yeah, then you can stop simulate it. it. Yeah, yeah, that's all it needs. It's It's. It wasn't about anything about finishing an engine off, it was more yeah. about keeping the timing arrangement together. Yeah, okay, yeah. These are, these Toyota cam gears are by far the best out of them all, yeah. I've found. Yeah, I've heard nothing but good things about them. I yeah. just, I like how they look. I, I, the, the I, I, literally, nice I literally bought them off the look. Not, yeah, the, the yeah. anodizing's nice, but it's, they're scratch built. Um, the anodizing is really good, like hardening. Yeah. So you don't get as much wear as like HKS. HKS yeah. is a really poor anodizing, poor alloy. Okay. I've seen them where you can actually feel the wear across the, the face of the tooth yep. after about seven years of driving with no covers on the dust. Oh, the wow. dust gets between the, the belt and the gear. And it wears it down. Yep. Oh, mate, unbelievably. But the case hardening on these seems to be quite good because, or um, well, the anodized hardening rather, um, because my engine has Toyota's, uh, 20 valve ones. I've run it for years with no covers on it through yeah. dust and everything with yeah. no throttle, like open throttles. And I haven't had a problem with the wear on the, the cam gears whatsoever. Like, it has worn off the anodizing a little bit, mm -hmm. but the wear on the gear is nothing like what I've seen on like HKS 16 valve gears yep. and the cheaper Taiwanese gears and stuff like that. These Japanese gears are the best. Well, just just feeling them as well when you're working on them, like when you loosen the bolts, they just click. And yeah, it's just, and the, the, the quality, so you know the hardness there. is there. Yeah, It's the yeah. hardness and the quality of the alloy that you're using is quite high. So yeah. They work out really nice. Yeah. yeah. So you um, loosen them up and you're just going to turn yeah. it around? Yeah, so she got 270 PSI before. We want to be at about 250. And okay. yeah, that's going to that's gonna put us in the sweet spot, I reckon. Let's see what she gets. back beyond standard, like the standard time position, which is probably going to be about like a 100 degree lobe center. So we want to be at about a, Kelf would say they want us to be at a 99 degree lobe center. But we want to be, this is close, 98 degrees where we found the sweet spot. But that's going off a 1600. This is a bit bigger than a 1600, so.
Let's give it a little bit of advance. Well, it's nice to know that there's that leeway, so it's not like you oh, can't, yeah. Yeah, with the if you use a factory timing gear that hasn't had the re, the keyway recut, you'll find that you'll have to max out the adjustment on these gears just yep. to get it right. Yeah. Um, so the recut keyway is a nice thing. Yeah. Um, gives you adjustability. Yeah, well it gives you, it puts it back to OEM. It puts the marks back into the OEM yep. spec. Yep. And then you're not maxing it out. I remember when I done my 7A, I actually went over a full tooth. So these, the, when the dots lined up, I was over a full tooth and then I had adjustment. Because okay. to, to get it to center, I had to max the gears out. Yep. That put it to zero, but I had no adjustment. So I yep. just moved them back to factory, moved both gears a tooth over, and then I had adjustment both sides. Okay. I know where we're at by cylinder pressure, and we want to be at a 250 to give us the enough timing to make the torque that we want to make. So anything over 250, we're going to start getting in knock, going into knock with about 27 degrees of overall timing. Yep. Um, and with this being a 250, we'll probably get about 27 degrees of overall, um, and, it, and it should be pretty knock safe. Like we're not gonna, cool. we're not gonna get a knock. If I was running full time E85, if I wasn't going to be running 98, you wouldn't even be stressing about the. No, no, no. The the, the the knock wouldn't be so much an issue because although we won't go into detonation, it will. Eventually, it will. Yep. But E85 is quite knock resistant, yep. so it won't actually knock, but we'll just lose torque. Yep. Like it will just plateau out, and then we'll just can, it can, it can continuously increase ignition timing, and it will just do nothing, nothing, nothing before it, like for a long time. As we window of safety and timing on petrol, you might only have three or four degrees of safety. Yep. In E85, you might have like eight to ten degrees of safety before yep. it starts to actually yep. create knock. Alrighty. We can leave it there, and we can go to the dyno and tune it as is. Play with it there, yeah. yeah, and we'll see what sort of time, what, what sort of timing it'll take. Uh, see what torque it makes and horsepower, uh, and then if we want to change where the power band comes up, we can move that around to bring it lower, move it further back, and carry the power over the top. Yeah, and um, and go from there. Perfect, man. How's he done? So excited. Yeah. I liked, uh, I liked how this came up with the angle that we managed to get here because there's so little deflection now on that side. And it's tight as it. Well, it's not so much the tension, it's the fact that we can actually pull hard on this. And the, the good thing about that is we're going to get rid of belt chatter yep. with the belt when with it, with it vibrating. The because it's, well, yeah, because it's taking everything from this exhaust cam, as soon as it starts to vibrate, we're going to see an oscillating time. So yep. if we were to put like an oscilloscope onto the timing output, or if we had an EC that had a built in oscilloscope, like an Mtron, we'd see that timing fluctuation at higher RPM. RBs suffer from it yep. badly. Uh, 2Js, they're not as bad because a 2J from factory has a speed wheel down the bottom and a single tooth cam on the exhaust. Yep. That just basically tells it home and then it references the speed to yep. the crankshaft. Yep. So even if that belt was to vibrate, it's still taking its speed off the crankshaft. So it knows yep. crankshaft position all the time. All the time as yep. we're here, we're taking both readings from the cam. If this starts to vibrate, it thinks that the engine is jerking as yep. it's revving up. Yep. So this this really does help. It's really going to help it. Yeah, it definitely really helps us to give a stable timing. Again, if we were to have a trigger wheel down the bottom to take all the information from, or even just half of the information, in like uh, engine speed, that would be really beneficial to the engine. But realistically, this is going to help us out a lot for the cam, that we, the camshaft uh, trigger system that we're using. I've got, um, I'll put your hexobular, hexobubular stud on. Oh, cool, thanks man. So we've got, uh, we've got somewhere to put your um, knock sensor. Do you know how to use a multimeter? Yeah, yeah. Basic? Yeah, pretty Very basic. basic. Yeah. Um, get it to continuity test, so it yep. buzzes when you touch them. Uh, and then touch the center of the, where it bolts onto that stud. Touch that to both pins. If it beeps, it's no good. You basically want the wideband knock sensor because it, it is just a, um, a microphone it is listening for knock as where the other ones they they suffer a lot from uh earth noise because yep. everything's earthing into the block yep. and if you're earthing that sensor into the block then it's going to induce noise yep. so you want a dedicated uh sensor ground back to the ecu so it's, it is then just a pure um microphone you're just listening for you know knock yeah and that's going to help with the self-learning too 
the self learning. Yeah, feature. not only that, and uh, engine protection. So if it does yeah. start to go into knock, it's a hot day, and um, obviously we can't simulate uh, an incredibly hot day. Yeah. If you start racing and it starts hearing knock, uh, even though we have calibrations in there to reduce timing, to pull put fuel in, and to try and compensate for that. Um, there is going to be conditions where it will go into knock and if it does hear it then it's going to stop that it's going to put into limp mode or it's going to it's going to let you know hey man i'm, I'm not happy all set yeah that's all set easy Alrighty, we can start uh, pulling up. all the stuff off perfect man well that'll be it for this video guys if you like the video be sure to like comment and subscribe and if you'd like to see part five where i prep the engine bay to receive the new engine hit that notification bell thanks guys